Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on using CARSI projects. This tutorial is primarily aimed at primary investigators at CARSI. For the eligibility requirements to become a primary investigator at CARSI, please see the UNM Office for the Vice President for Research's guidelines on eligibility to be a grant PI. We use the same guidelines when making our determination about whether to approve primary investigator requests. Roughly anybody who is research staff, research faculty, or regular faculty can lead a project and be a PI at CARSI. If you are not in one of those categories, you can still become a PI at CARSI by finding the letter of academic title request form on the OVPR's website getting that approved by your department chair and submitting that to us through the ticket system. I've put the link to the OVPR PI requirements page below this video. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is log into the cold front system. I'm going to use uh, the web browser here, Firefox. And we're going to go to coldfront.alliance.unm.edu. Here's the login page for Coldfront. Uh, you will already have to have created a CARSI account. If you haven't done that yet, please see um, the tutorial video on how to request CARSI accounts. I'm going to log in here with a test user account. And you can see on my home page, there are no projects to display and no resource allocations to display. So the way projects are organized is that users belong to projects and resource allocations can be made to those projects. So if I'm a PI and I log in and I wanna create a new project and get access to the Hopper cluster um, for my students, I would create a project. I would then allocate those students to the project and then I would request the Hopper cluster resource as an allocation. The first thing I'm going to do once I've logged in is request PI status. If I click on the little drop down menu here under my username and then click on user profile, there's a button that says upgrade account. So we're going to make a request to upgrade the account from a regular user to a primary investigator account. You can see I've set my UNM email address to be the email address for this test user. And now I'm going to hit Upgrade Account. That generates an automated request that goes to me. And then I will review to make sure that you meet the requirements to be a primary investigator following the guidelines of the OVPR. If so, then I will upgrade your account. All right, um, I have on the back end approved this user's request to become a PI. And so the next time um, the user logs in and checks that status under user profile, they'll see a green checkbox instead of a red X by PA status. All right, and that allows me some new abilities. I can now add a project. So I'm going to click the add a project button. And let's go ahead and create a test project. And here we're going to fill out a description of the project. It's helpful if you can make um, a one paragraph abstract of your project description as if it was for a grant request or for a, a paper abstract. Um, that allows us enough information where we can share the kinds of projects that we support with the Office for the Vice President for Research and also that we can make sure that we can reach out to you with the right resources that match the kind of research you're doing. Here, I'm just going to put in um, a test abstract. And then you can select the field of science. There isn't really, oh, I guess we're going to select training 
for Field of Science. And then we're going to save this. Uh, there's no approval process for creating projects. As a PI, you can create as many projects as you like. Um, it used to be in the error systems that the approval happened at the project level. That's no longer the case. The approval now happens at the PI level and at the resource allocation level. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, once I've created my project, you can see I'm listed here, the test user is listed here as the primary investigator. It's a new project created today. And I am automatically added as a manager for this project. The manager role allows me to add accounts and to request resources. The PI automatically becomes a manager, but you can allocate other people um, to the manager status. All right, so let's gonna add a couple of users here. I'm gonna search for uh, HPC uh, support students and add them to the project. So I'm gonna look for Ryan Sherbarth first. All right, I check the box to add him. I'm going to leave him as a regular user and I'm going to click add selected users to project. And now Ryan shows up in the list of people under my project. Let's go ahead and add somebody else. So add users. This time I'm going to add Maisie Dunlavi. Check the boxes before. This time I'm gonna give her the manager role. And now Maisie, when she logs in, will be able to add other users to this project and make allocation requests. Okay, so now that we've added a couple of users to our project, we can request a resource. So on its own, if um, this was the only project that test user Ryan and Maisie were under, and there's no resources allocated, if they try to log in to one of our systems, they would not be able to do so. We first have to add those systems to this project. So we're gonna request a resource allocation. Here are the predefined um, allocations that exist at the time of this tutorial. So for example, you can ask for uh, software licenses, you can ask for access to different clusters. Um, these uh, are for uh, condo partitions that um, PIs have purchased. And here's an example of a storage partition. So you can request access to that storage partition under Bill Shuttleworth's um, projects. All right, but in this case, we're just gonna ask for access to the Hopper cluster. We don't need to provide much of a, of a justification. All um, projects at CARSI are entitled to join the Hopper Wheeler uh, clusters. At the time of this video, there may be other clusters or these clusters may have disappeared, but the same principles will apply. And I'm going to select the users in my project who can access this resource. Um, an example why we want to be able to select individual users is if, for example, we were asking for the Gaussian software package that is only allowed to be used by UNM-affiliated users. And we could have users under our projects from anywhere. Um, they might be at different universities, they might be in the private sector or the governmental sector, in which case, if we were asking for Gaussian, we'd have to uncheck those users. All right, but for the Hopper access, we're gonna just allow everyone in our project to access Hopper. So we hit submit. And we now have this resource allocation request. Similarly to the upgrading to a PI status, that generates an automated message to me. I will review the resource allocation to make sure it's appropriate for your project. I'll go through the project description. For example, if you're asking for very large memory access or for GPU access, I'll double check to make sure that your project um, is in line with needing GPUs or large memory. And if there's an issue, I of course will reach out and we can talk about um, the options for the best uh, resources for your project. I have received the um, project allocation request and approved it. And so now if I hit refresh, I see that the status has gone from new to active. And there's some attributes. These are attributes that we add on the back end. So I already mentioned that one reason we um, handle the requests 
uh, for research allocations is to make sure the allocation is appropriate, but also because we need to add attributes to the allocation to make everything work on the back end. You don't need to worry about these attributes. They may change in the future. Um, but just for your information, uh, in order to get access to the Hopper cluster, you are added to the Hopper users group. And we set your Slurm account name to the project ID. This is so that when people in your project submit jobs to the Slurm system, it's properly accounted for against this particular project. I also want to draw your attention to the fact that allocations have end dates. So um, by default, that's one year. And this means that after one year period, uh, we will review to make sure the allocation still makes sense for your project. And um, there'll be requests to renew the allocation uh, if you st still need access to that resource after a year. This is helpful for things like classes where um, we'd like our classes not to keep on accessing the resources indefinitely and we will set class expiration dates to be the end of the semester. All right, I've shown you how to add users to the system. You are also able to remove uh, users. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll click the remove user button and I'm gonna remove Maisie from this project. And it's as easy as hitting the remove user button. And now only test user the PI and Ryan are members of this project. A couple of the other features we like about projects in Coldfront is we can add publications, uh, other research outputs, and grants to our project list. So we like to keep track of publications um, so that we can demonstrate that we are assisting the university research mission. Um, and now you have a mechanism for adding publications directly to um, your project. So you can enter here by DOI or um, you can enter it manually by entering the information, but putting in the DOI will automatically find your publication and populate information about that publication. Uh, you can also add grants. So of course, we're always happy to see when grants are added in support of um, your research or CURSI. That covers the major features that you'll need to know about to create projects, add users to your projects, and request resources for your project at CARSI. Um, if you have questions, of course, please attend office hours or send us an email at help at carsey.unm.edu. Bye-bye.